Spike, a cute German Shepherd service dog, stands next to John Lampert, who is seated in a chair in a large office with tables and filing cabinets. Camera angles change from wide, medium, and tight shots of both Spike and John. Hi, kids. We're going to show you something really interesting today. I'm here with my friend John Lampert, and we're going to take you through how Braille books or other reading materials are created. Hi, John. Hi, Spike. John, thanks for inviting me here today. I know you do some important work. Tell us what you do. Well, my job lets me help make books for kids who can't see. Does that mean you use Braille? Yeah, that's exactly what it means. How does that work? Well, since kids can't see the letters, the Braille letters are come up from the page a little bit so they can feel the letters, whereas you and I look at them Somebody who's a Braille reader will feel the letters instead. Quick zoom to Spike in front of a whiteboard with a Braille alphabet next to him. The alphabet scales down to get smaller as the text Braille cell appears followed by the text. The dots are a letter, word, number, or punctuation mark. Kids, I want to tell you more about Braille and what John was talking about. Each Braille letter or symbol has its own space or something called a cell. There can be up to six raised dots in a cell. There are 64 possible combinations of raised dots. Each combination of dots represents a letter of the alphabet, number, punctuation mark, or even a word. Quick zoom out to Spike in the office. Right now, I want to show you how Braille books and other materials are produced. Exterior shot of the Heightened Independence and Progress Center followed by an algebra textbook next to the Braille version of it and then people reading Braille. One of the things that the Heightened Independence and Progress Center for Independent Living does is create Braille textbooks and other printed materials, so people who are blind can learn the same things that people who have eyesight can. John works for the Independent Living Center. Braille is a system of writing where there are raised dots on paper. Each dot or series of dots means a letter or word. People who are blind learn the Braille alphabet and read with their hands. This is a picture of the Braille alphabet. You'll notice that each letter has its own space, or what is called a cell, which is the technical term, where up to six dots can be. Jane Jacobs oversees the Braille project. We've done textbooks for all ages, all over the country. We've done them for colleges, we've done them for kindergarten. We've done science, we've done Algebra, geometry. Geometry is very difficult because of all the drawings, so that takes a lot of handwork. We've done English books, we've done cooking books, we've done all kinds of everything from kindergarten all the way through college. We're going to show you how something is produced in Braille. To start off, if a teacher needs a textbook for a student who is blind, they would check if someone has already produced that textbook in Braille through a national database. If no one has, then the book would be sent to someone like John. John working at a computer followed by a braille embosser and burster in action. Who is a braille transcriber who uses computer software that changes text into braille. The person who is the transcriber then carefully double checks the computer file for errors. At that point, the computer file is sent to an embosser, which is really a braille printer. The machine embosses the paper with the raised dots. Then it's brought over to a machine called a burster, where the side edges of the special paper are removed and the pages are separated. Once that's done, the pages are bound together with plastic so the book doesn't fall apart. Accessibility is very important when it comes to disabilities, just like there's curb cuts for people who use wheelchairs, there's braille for people who can't see printed words. We want everyone to be able to read. And every time we get a book and it's transcribed, you have to make sure that it's word for word so that the person who is not visually able to see the printed word gets the exact same thing in Braille. Because a Braille letter or word takes up more space in a book than a printed letter or word, a Braille book is larger than the original printed book. The paper in Braille books is also thicker so the dots can be pressed into it. And if a teacher tells her class to turn to a certain page in their book, students using a Braille book will know exactly what page they need to turn to as well. Even though the Braille book is longer and the pages are different, the traditional print page number is on each of the Braille pages. My reader knows to the 
last word of a sentence to the last word of a paragraph where the print at what exact point the print page changes. In addition to textbooks, the Heightened Independence and Progress Center has also produced braille tax bills, descriptions for exhibits at a museum, and brochures that are handed out to people attending a play at a theater. Spike and John back on camera. I'm so glad kids got to learn more about braille and embossing. John, what's this machine between us? Braille typewriter being used. This is a braille writer. This is just like a braille typewriter. Uh, you put your paper in the top, and you press down a bunch of keys here, and what comes out is Braille, and you can feel it. It, it. Instead of printing letters like a typewriter does, it pushes dots up through the page, and that's what you can feel when you're reading Braille. Kids, before computers were created, this typewriter was one of the ways that Braille was printed. John, are there any other ways that Braille is made? Well, yeah, and um, before there were machines like this one, um, most blind people used a thing that was called a slate and stylus. And this is a stylus, and what you did was you would take the sharp end of it and you would punch it down onto pieces of paper in just the right configurations that would make the letters so that when the person you were writing to got the letter, he could just feel the letters that you had pushed the holes through. You could use it for anything at all. You could write a phone number down. You could, you could uh, write your grandma a letter. You could take down a shopping list. You could write anything you wanted to write at all. You could write with a slate and stylus. Thanks for showing us all of that today, John. Kids, there's one more thing I know you'll find interesting. A person who reads Braille can read really quickly, about as fast as someone who has eyesight can read out loud. Keep that in mind the next time you are reading a chapter in your textbook. I'll see you next time.